And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Athenaeum Mystic Library, a game about a library that you are a librarian and you are shelving books uh, in a fantasy world, and so they're books about fantasy stuff. Now, if you're wondering, Tom, haven't you already reviewed this game? Yes, and this is one of a weird theming choice. I don't have a problem with this theming choice. It's interesting, but this is the second game about fantasy books in a fantasy world in a fantasy library, and it's also a game from the same publisher, actually, Renegade Games. Now, it's a different designers, and the two games are very different games. I just found that to be intriguing. But anyway, let's take a look at this one. This one has a concept of drafting uh, in which you're going to have a handful of cards. You pick one, pass the rest to your neighbor. They pick one, and so on and so forth. But it also doubles down on that by when you play a card, you get what's on the card, but you're also giving something to both of your neighbors. Here's how it works. game, players are going to be trying to fill a bookcase that they have, so this is the bookcase that a player would have, with books in a way to satisfy objectives. So for example, this one shows two pink books next to a green book, and it has to be in my bottom two compartments here. Um, this objective shows this very interesting arrangement of books, and it has to be in that compartment. This objective shows that I just need to have books all along the sides of my shelves, and it doesn't really matter what color they are. And this one just shows this specific arrangement of books, and it can be played anywhere. So players are going to be trying to score these objectives, putting different books of various colors in their library. We got folklore and fan fiction, beastly textbooks, paranormal publications, biographies and memoirs, and rare manuscripts. Each player starts with two of these magic wands, you need these to score objectives, and the game takes place over two rounds. In round one, you're using deck A. In round two, you're using deck B. What's going to happen in each round is each player is going to get shuffled and hand it six cards. You're going to look at these cards, and you're going to play one, and then you're going to pass the other five to the next person. And after everyone's played their card and revealed them and gone through it, then you'll take the five that were passed to you, pick one, and you'll do that five times the last card isn't used. But when I pick a card and play a card, I'm going to do whatever it shows in the yellow part. So, for example, if I play this one, I get two pink books. But I'm giving the person to my left the opportunity to take a book, and I'm giving the person to my right the opportunity to take a book. So if my neighbor over here played this card, not only do I get two pink books, but I get a blue book. And if my neighbor over here played this card, I would also get a green and a purple book. Now when you take books, it doesn't really matter what the title of the book is, it's only the color that matters, you can start putting them in your bookshelf. Your first book has to go up against the wall because you can't just have a book standing there. That's not how books work. But after that, you can put them uh, next to each other, or you can even stack books on top, again, as long as there's support for them next to a wall. When you're done with the books, if you've met an objective here, you can put a wand on it to show that you've met the objective, and you'll score that many points on the score track. At the, after everyone has done that, this card will go away, these will come over and a new objective is done. Sometimes when you score an objective, you'll also get a magic wand. So there's all sorts of things that you can get. I shown you just books that you get from these cards, but there's things that let you move books around. There are things that give you a whole new side shelf, and you can have up to two of them and build one on both sides of your bookcase. These are more spots to fill up with books. You can also get to draw a bonus token. When you get a bonus token, you'll draw from the bag here, and the token will either, like this one here, is a double purple book, but on the other side of every token is a candle, and you can place a candle on top of your bookcases to give you bonus points at the end of the game. If you completely fill a whole section in, you'll notice there's little spider tokens here. So if you fill a whole section in, you get that spider token, and that spider token can be used to get you another wand, to get you a bonus token, to get you a book of any color, or to get you a side shelf. 
and then you just spend the spider token for that purpose. When you get one of these new sections, you put a spider in that also. So you have a chance to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spider tokens throughout the course of the game if you fill everything up. So that's pretty much it. Some cards will give you just straight points. Some let you move around a certain number of books. Some let you take a book of any color, but it has to go in a specific section. So there's all different sorts of cards that you can get. The game will end after everyone has played a total of 10 cards. And at that point, you will score bonus points for each section that you completely filled. You'll score the points. So this one, for example, shows six. You'll get points for candles. So here I could get two points if I have a candle here, and four points if I have a candle there. And then all the objectives that you've scored over the course of the game will have given you points, and whoever has the most is the winner. The components of this game are a mixed bag. Now, on the one hand, I like the fact that every book here um, has a different title. Like here we have Running with Bowlines. Here we have the old painting, oil painting with Dorian Gray. Uh, this one is the house. That's a shoe. And here, orb life. Okay, so they're all kind of funny. The another Thursday with Thor. And I like that. So that's cool. And also they have these little 3D containers that you build that hold the books. The magic wands are fine. But that's where I kind of stop liking the components of the game. I really dislike the spider tokens. I'd rather them be black cubes. These are really tiny tokens. They're easy to lose. The books themselves, and in fact, all the tokens, I mean, this is 2020 when this game came out. And the fact that there's these, they're just not good tiles. When you punch them out, they still have these edges on them. And everything looks really cheap. These cards, yes, they tell me what to do. But, ah, oh, that's just, it's a really ugly card. And, in fact, the whole board has this bluish tint on it and everything. I just wasn't impressed with that part of the components. I mean, I got what they did. I understood everything. But the game doesn't look good. It looks washed and bleh. So that, that's my biggest problem with the components. Once again, folks, I'd like to reiterate that this game and Ex Libris, which was the first library game from Renegade, are very different games. This one here is simply about filling in spots on a board. That's all the game is, is it's filling in spots to meet objectives. Now, on a cursory look, I really like the game. I love drafting games in general, and the concept of this one, where you get the card and you're giving something yourself, and then giving something to your neighbor. So you're always trying to think, what do my neighbors want and don't want? I don't want to give them this. I'll give them this. I don't think they need it, etc. Is an interesting concept. And it's fun because once you play your card, you flip it over and you're like, oh, what did my neighbors give me? That's cool. And then stacking the stuff in a bookcase, scoring objectives, making sure that you do things to get more magic wands so that you can score objectives, filling up bookcases. All that sounds interesting and works well until it doesn't. And, 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 and again, I know a lot of people really like this game. So this is not a negative review by any means. I had a good time with it. It's just that I don't really have much desire to keep playing it more. And there's a few reasons for that. One, that concept of giving yourself something good and everyone else something is just not, it's, 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 it's more interesting in concept than it is in reality. For the most part, I'm looking at the one that's good for me. I almost never pick something that's less than the best thing I want just because it gives my opponent something. I don't have time for that. I mean, I suppose you can analysis paralysis the game to the point where you're like, okay, if I do this, I get this, and you get that, and you get that, uh, but if I do this, no, usually I look at them and say, I need a pink book, this gives me a pink book, I'm taking this card. I need magic wands, I'll take this. You could even argue like once I get the cards to my neighbor, I know that I gave him several cards that give the neighbor to his right magic wands, so he'll probably play one of those, but that is way too meta and too deep of a level for what this game is. So that concept, it sounds good, and I would love to see other games use this. It just didn't work here as well as I wanted it to, or at least on how well I thought it would work. Essentially, like I said, you just pick the thing that's best for you, and then you get whatever you get from other people. The, um, the pulling the tokens from the bag and using it as a double book, or sometimes it lets you rearrange books, or as a candle, like that concept, adding things. The spiders are neat, even if they are fiddly and tiny. 
The other thing though I did not like is the rolling objectives. Sometimes an objective comes out and you're like, I got it. I can do that one. And it was, they give too many points for that not to make this game super light. In the sense, if I built my book, something comes out and I go, oh, there's no chance I can do that objective. But Billy Bob over there, it just happened to be something that he had built. He didn't mean to do it. And that happens often in this game. Which, as a very, very casual game, I don't mind. That's the way the, you know, the books fall. But it, it, if, if you're trying to take it a little bit more seriously, it doesn't work. But then if you're playing casual, then the drafting, giving your opponent stuff... I don't know. The game just seems to have a weird balance that it doesn't work for me. And then when you couple the drab, drab look of the game on top of that, it's kind of a game where I'm like, all right, that was an interesting thing, but it's not a game that I would ask to play very often. That being said, I'm putting it in the Dice Tower library because I know a lot of people will enjoy it. The concept of building a library is one that I like. I love libraries. I love sorting books out. Um, but here... The books don't really mean anything. It's just blobs of color, essentially, and putting them in different spots. And the game also tends to get a little anticlimactic near the end. When your bookshelves are filled, as objectives come out, you know you can do them or not. It's either going to be they're done or they're really close to done or no chance of me ever doing this one, even if I do play cards that let me switch books. So it's fine. It's interesting. But for me, it's a little forgettable. And it just, I just, I still wish it looked better. That's Athenaeum. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment, it's interesting for a while.